An Introduction to the Critical Appraisal of Evidence, sponsored by the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer and brought to you by the Capacity Enhancement Program. When developing high-quality practice guidelines, one of the important steps is to evaluate the quality of the evidence that you will be using as a basis for your recommendations. We call this critical appraisal. This is a step that many guideline developers tend to do quite poorly, or even skip altogether. Let's talk about why that's not such a good idea. Here's an example. If a guideline recommends that all people should take purple and pink polka dot pills to help them live longer, then readers need to know whether the evidence used to generate that recommendation can be trusted before they can decide whether to follow the recommendation and start taking polka dot pills. Guidelines can be based on evidence from other guidelines, systematic reviews, randomized trials, other study designs, or even on expert opinion. Each of these sources can be at risk for different types of biases, and some more so than others. Now what do we mean by bias? Bias is any systematic error that results in an incorrect estimate of the true results. Bias can either lead to the conclusion that something works more than it actually does, or that something doesn't work when in fact it does. Generally speaking, the more rigorous the research, the less open to bias that evidence is. Evidence is more likely to be trusted if it is free from bias. There are many types of bias. Let's take a quick look at two examples. One example is selection bias. That's when there are differences in the baseline characteristics of groups that are being compared. If researchers use a non-randomized process and assign young healthy people to receive the polka dot pill and older people with heart disease to receive the placebo control, then the results of comparing these two groups would be biased. The young healthy people are more likely to live longer than the older people with heart disease no matter what pill they get. Another example is reporting bias. Let's say the polka dot pill helps people live longer, but it is associated with terrible toxicity. If authors choose to report the survival results but not the toxicity results, then this will give readers a biased view of how effective the polka dot pill really is. Guidelines need critical appraisal of the evidence. If guidelines don't report anything about the quality of the evidence, then how can readers decide if they should follow the recommendation? Guidelines based on biased evidence may have recommendations that are not appropriate. So how do you do critical appraisal? Well, you could think about the evidence, evaluate the quality, and discuss the quality in the guideline text, or create a table to present important quality elements for each piece of evidence. But, critical appraisal tools can be great guides to help you through the process. They can remind you of the quality elements you should be thinking about for different types of evidence. Critical appraisal tools come in many shapes and forms. Some are checklists, others are scales, and others are more descriptive. You can choose one that suits your purposes. Once you've done your critical appraisal of each piece of evidence, what do you do with it? Well, you need to document what you did. This includes which tools you used, who did the appraising, how many reviewers did the appraising, and what the results were. Not only do you need to document these things for your own records, but you also need to report them in your guideline. You might choose to include a table summarizing the critical appraisal results. That will be easy for users to read. You should also provide a summary of the overall quality of the evidence in the text of your guideline. Users need to get a good idea of the big picture. You should use the results to decide which evidence is going to be used to inform your recommendations. Poor quality or biased evidence shouldn't play a large role in informing recommendations. In conclusion, all evidence-based guidelines need some critical appraisal of the evidence that informs the recommendations. Without it, readers don't know whether to trust the evidence you used or whether to follow your recommendations. Critical appraisal methods need to be described in your guideline and you need to report the results and use them to put the evidence into context. This has been a presentation by the Capacity Enhancement Program of the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer.